Report! Main power's offline. We've lost shields. Our weapons are gone. Perhaps today is a good day to die. Prepare for running speed! Sir, there's another starship coming in. It's the Enterprise. The Defiant's losing life support. Bridge to transporter room three. Beam the Defiant survivors aboard. Captain, the Admiral's ship has been destroyed. What is the status of the Borg cube? It has sustained heavy damage to its outer hull. I am reading fluctuations in their power grid. On screen. Number one, open a channel to the fleet. Channel open, sir. This is Captain Picard of the Enterprise. I'm taking command of the fleet. Target all of your weapons onto the following coordinates. Fire at my command, sir. The coordinates you have indicated do not appear to be a vital system. Trust me, Data. The fleet's responded, sir. They're standing by. Fire. Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models, my name is Bob Wardgen and this is a brand new step-by-step -step video build we're going to be doing which is going to be of um, a nice Star Trek model. Now this is a set of uh, seven models, it's by AMT and it is in a whopping one. Um, in 2,500 scale, so um, really, really, really scaled down. Uh, now, I know there's seven kits in here. We probably won't touch them all. We're going to be building the Enterprise E for this one, um, and then, I don't know, once we've built that, we might just kind of carry on, see how I feel, see how you guys are, are responding to this uh, step by step. But um, the whole reason why I've picked this kit is one, you know what, um, sometimes you kind of get a mojo for something and you just really sort of want to build it. So this is my little mojo at the moment. Um, not only that, on a teaching sort of sense, these are old, old kits. I mean, we're dating back 20 odd years with, with these kits. So um, they are old, they don't have a lot of detail. Um, the whole build of them is about like seven pieces that come together and then it's built, right? So there's no little pieces. It's very sort of simple to sort of um, put them together. But because they're so old, what AMT's gone off and done is give these kits a whole burst of new life uh, um, now by going off and making these fantastic decals for them. These decals literally kind of virtually wrap around the whole model um, and it just puts so much detail in there hopefully you can sort of see from the pictures enterprise d here as you can see you know we've got this aztec thing going on let me show you on this camera you can sort of see all this aztec thing going on that is just loads of decals wrapped all around it which is what sort of brings these kits to life um, so as i say on a teaching sense we're really going to sort of go deep into deckling. I have already built one. Hopefully as we can just see it's a nice simple one to start with. If you do get this kit, the uh, original Enterprise um, out of all of them doesn't have that many decals on there. So you can sort of get used to the deckling process of trying to wrap it around and all this kind of stuff. Um, the um, one thing is, is as well is that the decals i mean they are really cool you know they are you know wrap around loads and loads of detail on them but the decal film themselves isn't sort of like the best they are a little bit on the thick side and you do really sort of have to go de to town with um, the deck deckling solution so um in that sense that could have been better considering these kits are completely wrapped in decal film 
but hopefully it's sort of going to be on a teaching sense where one you can do something as hard as wrapping decals all way round models and then and the decal film not being the best so we've got to sort of deal with those two sort of you know we're sort of going advanced as far as decals go um, with these kits so let's sort of move along get started a little bit with this well first off uh, as you can see i've already done some building but let's have let's just have a look at the kit we're going to be building shouldn't take too long um, we've got all these decals in here if i'll just find the one we're going to be doing which i do believe is this one let's just put these out of the way um, now as as always i mean this one's going up um free on youtube but um, at Genesis Models website, uh, genesismodels.co.uk, um, there's like loads of sort of behind the scenes stuff where there's loads of videos um, you can go watch um, over there. So it is better to go to the Genesis Models website because everything is there. Uh, but here's the decal sheet. As you can see, nice big A4 piece. And we've got all this kind of um, like loads and loads of decals and we've got to sort of work out where they all go but they basically just wrap all around all nicely um, and as you can see i mean we've got all this lovely detail on here showing all the escape pods and um, all the writing and all that kind of cool stuff and the pattern that goes with it um, so they're going to be cool um, but we'll be getting to them later um, the instructions are very sort of basic and easy well sort of easy in a sense where is the one we're doing so here is the enterprise e instructions um, as you can see what cells come together right going down to the um, sort of bottom part of the hull uh, and then you know there's not really that many pieces the source sections two pieces comes together um, it should be fairly easy to sort of follow the decals on the other hand these are your instructions not very big um you know could have been done with sort of expanding a bit um but we should hopefully get there in the end but as you can see loads and loads of decals so instructions very very simple very very basic they could have been better uh, if you did want to get this kit it is around about the 80 pounds mark depending on where you go which um, depends how you feel about it really it's um, it's quite a lot of money you do get seven kits in here but they are old kits um, it's kind of a personal preference I think on that but what we need for this particular build is this is what we have got we've got our saucer section just here right um, and as you can see i mean the windows are recessed and everything um there is a bit of detail going on on there right but what you've got to remember is this is really scaled down one in 2500 here is the bottom part of the saucer section as you can see so these are going to go together um, and then we've got the rest of the pieces just in here here we go so here's like the main hull again same level of detail i mean it's not bad for an old kit shall we say um, but these recessed panel lines are probably a bit out of scale they are quite uh, big for what scale it is um saucer section i mean we've got a bit of flash here but it's not actually that much on where you know the pieces are so that's not a massive big deal um, bottom part of the hull just there uh, and we've got a little piece just here which is like the uh, um, the sensor disc just in there right and then we've got this other piece here not sure what this is but we will find out later on we've got a nice space here which is like a nice big um, sort of saucer base going on with some very sort of nice metal rods to go in there so let's get started so cutting these off the sprues um, is 
kind of simple, but actually this one's got a bit of a challenge to it. Now, we start off with our warp nacelles. Um, when cutting these off, we don't want to be cutting right up um, off the sprue and onto the piece. We actually want to bring it down just a little bit, right? So as we leave a bit of tab, Right, so as you can see, we've actually left a little bit of the tab on there. We haven't cut right the way down uh, because we could end up damaging the piece. Right Now, with the warp nacelles, we've got this um, horrible sort of thing going on here. It's re the, These types of uh, sprues are quite a bit of a pain because if you try and cut these and try and leave a bit of the sprue off, what happens is, because the way it's shaped, right, it sort of pushes, as you can see, I'm just like moving um, the cutters here and the way it's shaped, it sort of actually pushes you down and pushes you down right up against um, the piece which we could end up damaging. So um, what we can do, there's a couple of sort of ways we can go about this. We could get out a razor saw, right? And we can sort of cut into it like so. This is a nice razor saw actually. Um, I think it was maybe just over 10 pounds or something, but like, um, you can get them from pretty much any online hobby shop or something. Um, they do do a smaller version. If I just get that one out just to show you. Um, this one's by, who's this one by again? Uh, was it cmkkits.com? Right, uh, it's basically sort of photo etched, really sort of nice and thin and we've got you can almost hardly see the teeth they're that sort of fine which is rather good um, if you've say you know got a bit more money about yourself i mean these are quite expensive by dis um display um, and these are like a razor not a, ra a razor blade type cutters and i do believe these don't get pushed down because they sort of really biting because they've got a razor blade in there hopefully as you can see but it's probably, because these are quite expensive, I forgot how much they were, they were about like 40 pounds or something, right? They are not cheap, but they don't slide down, as you can see, because they do bite in. But then it is trying to get in there, so I might have to just come back with a razor blade anyway. Right, but as, as you can see, you know, it's a bit of a pain, these types of sprues right because um you, you will sort of with these types because it's such a big area you will sort of like cut into your piece not good at all um so what we can do then once we've got rid of most of it right we can sort of come along and shave off the um uh, sprue now i say shave off not come in and dig right up right up to the edge right up to the piece because we're sort of then you know again we could still damage the piece if we shave off and take a bit off at a time and slowly cut down into it we'll eventually sort of get close to our actual piece right which probably at this stage i mean it depends how sort of you are uh, how you feel personally um we i mean i personally i don't mind sort of keep on going and shaving with the blade i've got sort of used to using the blade like that um but what you can do is get out some sanding sticks um you know sanding stick wise online hobby shops and stuff will you know normally sell some sort of a brand of of sanding sticks and we've normally got sort of like nice and fine um spongy sanding sticks are normally good um this one in particular is by um flurry models right what we can do is sort of just nicely sand and because it's spongy it's going to go with this curvature right if we came out with say a a um a flat one right we could end up sort of sanding a flat bit into this 
alive but because we've got this sponge we are sort of you know going with the curvature now I'm coming in with a sort of a finer sanding stick just to finish that off like so and there we go I mean that is now sort of looking good and good to go so you want to go around and cut all your pieces off basically I mean I'm going to just do more than one go because there's only like a couple here and get all this prep work done and start gluing away